the winner will go on to face the victor in the Australia-Canada game, which is coming up next uh, after this game. That it is in order to fight their way back to the championship final. On the second elimination bracket, this of course being a double elimination. Try to get back up into that bracket. And coming up here, we're gonna have number 130 for Team USA West. That is Logan Childs. And number 77, Whitney Emmerich jamming for USA West. USA West in the red jerseys. USA East in the blue jerseys. Logan Child running up to the front. Lily Dow guarding the inside lane keeps him from getting anywhere. Whitney Emmerich got now in the forward position. Facing off against a three-walled Ashland Fish on the inside. Bailey Wheat on the outside. And in the center, number 12. Number 12, Madison Yoder getting wiped out. Logan there goes Whitney Childs Emmerich side sent in for a cut track. Whitney Emmerich sidestepping Maureen McIntosh to get out of the pack. She is the first lead jammer in this East versus West game. As I was saying, Logan Child sent to the penalty box on a cut track. So Whitney Emmerich on a power jam for Team USA West. Quick five points for Team USA West. No points for Team USA East. Team USA West still on a power jam for the power start. Heading off the start to Daniel McLaughlin. Logan Child standing in the penalty box, though, as the jammer for USA East. And that is Logan Childs. And a zip right through the pack. Right past number 17, Terrence Spence of USA East. Daniel McLaughlin now on his first scoring pass. Logan Childs fighting in the back of the pack, goes to the outside, trying to find a line, ends up caught in the middle. There he is up front, completes the initial pass. He'll be racing around, getting into scoring position, which is where Daniel McLaughlin is fighting the front of the pack, zips on by four points for Daniel McLaughlin. Showing some speed in this West Jammer. Taylor Motto with a ineffectual hip check, and he brushes off another one from Taryn Spence. Gets through the second time. This time gets the full five points. Looks like Logan Childs back the in around. the penalty box for USA <laughs> East now standing. Okay, that, yes, that's a, that's all three are grand slams. Logan Childs went back to the penalty box. Now, uh, very often you, they won't get the jammer lap point if right. the jammer that was in the penalty box gets into the pack before they start their scoring pass, then it does not count as a jammer lap point. That's a fine point in the rules that was in the most recent rules update, uh, well, earlier this year at least, right, around right. March, uh, which can be con a little bit confusing at times. Uh, for, for <laughs> but <laughs> Just a little bit. But right now we have Zen Zapinoso for USA West on the power start very quickly through for lead jammer. And Logan Childs entering the track oh in an goodness. illegal position. So sent off for illegal procedure. The power jam continuing for Team USA West. This is a absolute, absolutely a devastating way to start out the game for any team. Look at the footwork over there of Zen Zapinoso. Amazing skating on this side. He's been doing derby for two years. Apparently was a speed skater before that. Uh, and you can see it right now. He's got, well, he's got speed and agility though. He That's can right. skate, he can, he can get down low, take advantage of any tiny opening. Here he is going up. <laughs> Number 77, Kelly Murphy, just at a loss over what to do. Also right by Tessa Marshall, USA East there up at the front through for a grand slam. Zen Sapinoso. Kelly Murphy this time able to get in front of him, and Michaela Bordayo gets in front of him, cuts him off, knocks him out of bounds. And uh, Logan Childs again standing in the penalty box when the jam gets called off. So great. still no relief for Team USA East. Absolutely. Zen Sapinoso with some great 
heads up play there, freezing the jammer in the penalty box, giving the power start to his teammate, Whitney Emmerich. Now on the jammer line. Team USA East lining up a little bit in front, give it a little bit more time to react. Whitney Emmerich, the the jam, this is actually technically a rematch from the first jam. Technically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's because Logan Child has, was the first jammer and is still jamming. This time is not taking any chances. Goes ahead and comes back in well in front of the pack. No chance of getting a getting a legal re-entry call that that's, way. But that he has to take the long way around. Bit. Oh, there we go. Madison Yoder now receiving a le legally receiving the star and is now the second jammer for Mad for USA East. The Coming second jammer here in Jam Four. <laughs> That's right, but is not going to get around. Whitney Emmerich easily able to call off the jam uh, before Madison Yoder can get in. Three points for USA West. So now for the second time only, USA East able to field. A fresh jammer at the start line, still at zero points, USA West at 41. That's right, they're going to hand that to Natalie Full and Daniel McLaughlin for USA West. Okay. Got it. Daniel McLaughlin knocked down by Taylor Motto as the recycle. Up front, Natalie Foley, oh, gets a oh. cutting the track penalty. Another bad turn of events for USA East. Big good luck for USA West. USA West, Daniel McLaughlin grabbing lead jammer around the outside of the pack. Coming around for this first scoring pass, you know he's got a short pack. But uh, they get in there breaking things up for him on a power jam. He's <laughs> Wow, that agility on this kid. Lateral movement, mixing up Team USA East, getting them all crossed up right around the outside. There's a grand slam. Second scoring pass, USA East setting up with a skirmish line across. Now Lindy G. Trout, who is only 16 years old, but really? she's already as tall as me, and I'm, uh, well, she's almost, she's almost, well, she's taller than me on skates, but yes. she's only 16 years old. So. I anticipate, I'm just guessing there's going to be an athletic career absolutely, ahead of her. Absolutely. <laughs> Natalie fully oh. out of the penalty box and gets wasted by Lexi Wager, number 18 of USA West. These things are going very rough for USA East right now. West so far absolutely dominating this game. I don't think I don't think that either team has been able to shut out Australia or Canada they for this not. long. Natalie Foley finally threw on that initial pass. Daniel McLaughlin around the outside gets through the pack. Coach Vito signaling for him to keep on going, so he'll go for another pass. Natalie Foley in scoring position. Looks like she's already got one point, maybe two. Rochelle Joubert, Lindy G. Trout, and Lexi Wager are in a three wall, shutting down Natalie Foley. She gets. Only a partial, but finally putting points on the board for USA yes. East. This USA is East Jam 5, points, eight yeah. minutes into the game, the first two points for USA East. 58-2 to two here just about 10 minutes in. And we're going to have Zen Sapinosa for USA West. And number 26, that is Tessa Marshall for USA East. Whistle blows, Zen Zappinoso going for the inside. Tessa Marshall follows him through, zips around the outside of one blocker, and it's a foot race. Tessa Marshall out first, your lead jammer. Zen Zappinoso trying to get in front of her, passes her over there in turn one, forcing the call off. Great speed by Zen Zappinoso. That speed skating career definitely coming into play. That's the first lead jammer for, uh, uh, for USA East but it was forced to call off, so they were not able to convert any points. Speaking of speed jamming careers, that's Lexi Wagger over there, nationally ranked speed skater, uh, number 18 for Team USA West. Against Bailey Wheat, number nine for Team USA East. We've got a four on three pack advantage for the West. Lexi Wager gets spun almost out of bounds by Madeline Yoder, held up briefly by Austin Pinckney, but races ahead. She is lead jammer, a familiar sight for, for the West. 
Bailey Wheat outraces Cameron Brown to exit the pack, but has a half a lap to go to catch up to Lexi Wager. Lexi Wager gets a head of steam up. Oh, nice agility around the inside. Picks up her four, calls it off. So USA of four and out with the opposing jammer coming around to score. Great call off by Lexi Wager. Now it's four points for the West, 62 to two. The West well in the lead with 20 minutes remaining in the first half. Once again, West in the red, East in the blue. And we've got Tessa Marshall stepping up to the jammer line for the East against Daniel McLaughlin, number 555 for the West. Daniel McLaughlin sees the line on the inside. Oh, almost there. A little bit of resistance up front. Taylor. And he is your lead jammer. Taylor Motto trying to hold on, doing a good job, but uh, Daniel McLaughlin Fights his way free. Didn't it looked like there was more effort than he did in the previous one. So he's definitely starting to show something, trying to figure out these jammers. But right now, the West jammers absolutely dominating. Oh. Now, great blocking by both teams. But so far, I, in my opinion, the game so far has been a, a really about the West jammers. I mean, absolutely. there was a lot of bad luck with yes. Logan Childs. There were a few technical penalties. That could, that could have been avoided with just a little bit more patience, a little bit more care taken. But uh, really, the, you cannot touch these West jammers. Look at that. Now, now that was nice Around screening the inside. by the West. They drew oh, a cut, dear. cut no. track. Uh, yeah, Tessa was. Marshall drew a cut track earlier, so they were on a power jam. Uh -huh. Daniel Balaflin now being sent in, and looks like he's going to serve about the full 30 seconds. Yes, he will, as Tessa Marshall released just before Daniel Balaflin sat down. But we're, but I mean, in, in, and this is just my opinion right now. But, uh, but we're we're not seeing quite the same caliber so far of jammers of raw ability. Both teams are have great blockers. There's no doubt about it. We saw that against the Australia team against in the Australia and Canada games. Both of these teams have played Australia and Canada, and we and we saw that blocking. But both teams was absolutely outstanding. But absolutely. The, the level of jamming right now that I'm seeing by the West is absolutely outstripping the jammers from the East. Taylor Motto with last contact, but it's just a brush with the hip, and Daniel McLaughlin is right by. Daniel McLaughlin getting a five point pass there right at the end. Tessa Marshall still in the penalty box for USA East. So once again, USA East going to be giving up the power start. And looks like that's going to be given to Zen Sapinoso. But I think that you're right, Bulldog. The, the jammers for USA West right now are just completely baffling these USA East blockers. Their lateral, lateral movements are getting them caught up. Mm -hmm. The bursts of speed at just the right time and the, their ability to spot those seams. Mm -hmm. Um, now, now, if it was just the four of them again, when it's just the four of them able to concentrate on the jammer, they're able to they're able to do some containment. But yes, with the other with the four blockers from the west also able to do their job and doing it so well, they're able to put up the screens and pick off the blockers and just basically allow allow the jammer to go one or two to one. Ne yes. they're never having to deal with more than two blockers most of the time, and basically they're just of such a high caliber that they're just they're just breezing right by them most of the time. That's Alexi uh, Wager. That's Logan. Ch no, sorry, uh, Zen Sapinosa. Yes, yeah, Logan yeah. Charles is East. Yes. Uh, he's a great jammer he too, is. but uh, he had a he has some bad luck at the, at the beginning. Of the Zen Sapinosa, Daniel McLaughlin, and Lexi Wager. Absolutely stellar jammers. Those guys are ready for the big leagues. They are. They are. The MRD is going to be so happy to have Zen Zapatoso up there when he gets there, as well as Daniel McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. uh, Ole Roller's already looking at Lexi Wager, of course. Uh, They've been looking at Lexi Wager for, for a couple three of years. years. <laughs> <laughs> Lexi Wager, a national, uh, an internationally ranked speed skater in yes, her age is. bracket since she was, I think, since she, before, she, since she was she, ten. Absolutely, <laughs> since before she started playing roller derby. Now she's uh, she's turned eighteen. This is going to be her last weekend. Only roller she's been skating. Usars with them. They're so happy she's going to be able to be on the flat track for them. Zen oh, nice work by Tessa oh, wow. Marshall. That was a tough block from J Rochelle Joubert, but she was able to stay in, landed the landed inside on one foot, and kept it going. It was able to complete her initial pass. I think I think people were telling Zen Sapinosa to call it, but he got a penalty 
back block, unable to call it. So this is a big opportunity potentially for the East. They have a 30 second power jam right now. Tessa Marshall on her first scoring pass. That they do and they've got a blocker core out there that can do nice screening, breaking up the Team USA West penalty kill. Team USA East putting up five more points on the board so far. In this yeah, power jam, you see a Team USA East trying to get in there, break things up, stop that blocker core. Anastasia Smith gets in front of T Tessa Marshall. Anastasia Smith and Ale Alexandra Smith, numbers 21 and 8 respectively, are out there right now. They're actually sisters. I see. Yep. <laughs> I, I, that, <laughs> not, they, 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 look, they look more like cousins to me, but, uh, but I mean, I, I would have maybe guessed they were cousins, but they're actually sisters. <laughs> USA East blocker there, number 13, Michaela Bordalo, sent off for a forearm, so that's going to loosen things up for the Team USA West Jammers. Now only three blockers. Oh, wow, nice hit there. Sending Zed Sapinoso off to the sidelines. Bailey Wheat staying in front of Zen Sapinoso. Now Carly Thomas coming across and actually getting him out of bounds. That was nice teamwork. That was, uh, that that was, was. Bailey Wheat and Carly Thomas working well together and actually able to send Zen Sapinosa off the track, forcing a recycle. And looks like we have an official timeout. Officials have to discuss something, talking to the coaches. We might be able to find out what this is about. It's probably not an official review. I haven't seen any signal on that. Looks like the head ref wants to have a conference. So, Fast Girl Skates, get schooled, duck out, or check out Fast Girl University on Facebook. We have these handwritten, and it's, it, it, that looks like duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose it does. <laughs> we might be able to make that work. <laughs> duck out to Fast Girl Skates. <laughs> <laughs> At fastgirlskates.com. Fast Girl Skates, of course, sponsoring our live stream. Really want to take them. Also want to thank Tenacious Ventures, our streaming partner, sending out this stream. We've gotten a lot of great comments. Wow, this is high quality paper. This is like, yeah. And we want to remind you also, if you're enjoying our high quality stream by Tenacious Ventures, donate today by simply clicking the donate button on the JRD homepage. Help us reduce the cost. Streaming is awesome. We love doing it but it does cost money, and uh, if you help donate, we're able to keep <laughs> our streaming costs lower and being able to put on more great events just like this one. Lexi Wagor out there with the star on for Team USA West. The official timeout's still going on. Looks like they're over there at the penalty box. We have a uh, medic double checking with Tessa Marshall in the penalty, but Tessa Marshall, the jammer for USA East, and uh, medic just doing a just doing a check. Uh, may have, may have been checking for a concussion. You know, doing the standard tests for a. I, I'm I'm not I'm that's not official or anything right. like that. But uh, it looks like everything checks out. He's satisfied that she's ready to continue the bout. But we've got a power jam for Lexi Wager of USA West, held up briefly by Taylor Motto. Madison Yoder not able to get in front of her. And out of play called on Madison Yoder. That drops USA East down to only two blockers. And Lexi Wager makes short work of it. Taylor Motto and Austin Pinkney not even able to get in front of her. Lexi Wager, if she gets ahead of steam up, she is just going to go right by you on the outside, inside, it doesn't matter. And if you get that wall in front of her, that lateral move left back and forth, trying to find it, get them crossed up. But if you get her slowed down, what I found is that you do have a better chance of actually stopping her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michaela Bordayo and Taylor Motto able to get Lexi Wager. She, they had her going kind of slow. 
She had to, but she's also got tremendous acceleration. So she really does. You have to really can't you can't you not only have to get her getting slow, but you also can't give her any kind of runway. That's right. If you have she, to keep her contained and stay right on her. Yeah, she can get pretty much up to top derby speed in about three strides, maybe yes. four, maybe four. And she's got short legs, so when I'm short saying strides. strides <laughs> USA West handing it over to Cameron Brown. I believe that's the first time we've seen him today. On another power start for Team USA West. Now Cameron Brown jammed quite a bit against Australia this morning, but this is actually his first time on the jammer line. So they've been holding him in their pocket so far. Now all four <laughs> East blockers able to crowd him, knock him out of bounds. Carly Thomas drawing him to the top of turn three. Tessa Marshall Two. out of the penalty box, hands off the star. We have a star pass. Cameron Brown finally through, but right behind him on his heels is the former pivot, number 12, that is Madison Yoder. Madison Yoder trying to chase him down. They are both now on their first scoring pass. Cameron Brown calling off the jam. It, was, it looked like it was going to be too late. However, all of the West blockers had moved to a forward position, and that fourth whistle caught Madison Yoder. She was not able to get any points. Two for USA West, puts East at 11, West at 93, 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Well, one of the funny things about Cameron Brown, I've watched him do this, not just in, in a Nationals, but with his home team. Um, once he's finished with a jam, he'll actually hold up the number of points he thinks he should have got to the referee. <laughs> and he sure changed himself, actually. He did. He, he said he one, one, the referee one. said, nah, I'll give you two. <laughs> but yeah. we've got... Uh, Number 77, Kelly Murphy jamming for the first time for the East against number 77, Whitney Emmerich. So it's 77 versus 77. But no, Kelly Murphy heading to the penalty box, so it's another power jam for the West. Jammer penalties still hurting USA East. You cannot score, of course, if your jammer's in the penalty bench. And they're just getting penalty after penalty on those jammers. First scoring pass is a grand slam. Now on the second one, Whitney Emmerich runs into... Karen Spence, Taylor Motto tries to cross, but Whitney Emmerich able to avoid that and dodges around. Taryn Spence gets out for a second grand slam. Scoring pass number three. This time it's uh, Hel Helena Thompson. Yes, Helena Thompson makes first contact. And she see, uh, but actually Whitney Emmerich saw Kelly Murphy sitting, standing in the penalty box and opts to call off the jam. So another power start handed over to Zen Sapinoso. He's got all four East blockers to contend with, and they are right there on the jammer line. So I'm going to guess it's a scrum start. What do you think, Bulldog? I think so, but it's a three-on-two pack advantage now. Uh, oh, sorry, four-on-two. Four-on-two pack advantage. Oh, well, out of nowhere, West. out of the penalty box. Kelly Murphy, lead jammer. Now, that was against only two blockers, though. Kelly Murphy only had, uh, there were two blockers in the penalty box for the West. So Kelly Murphy beats Zep Zen Zapanosa out of the pack. But that was a four to two advantage for the East. So It uh, was. That's ex I mean, that's exactly what, I mean, that's, that's the situation that the East appears to need at this point. When, is, when the odds are even, well, then it's not even. It, it doesn't appear to, not this morning. They, of course, had a much closer game yesterday. And I'd be willing to bet uh, they're going to make some adjustments uh, once they're able to sit down and talk about this for the 15 minutes at the halftime. Right now, Lexi Wager on the line for USA West. And that is number four for USA East, Natalie Foley. Natalie Foley running into Lily Dow on the inside. Lexi Wagger working up front, around the outside, pushes to the inside. There we go, lead jammer, USA West. Like you said, Lexi Wagger able to accelerate very quickly past the remainders of that wall. That's right, her, her skate name, her derby name in her home team when she's not playing uh, for the USA West is Lexcelerator. Lexcelerator, absolutely. And it's very appropriate. Natalie Foley does complete her initial pass, but they're gonna call it off. Cutoff scoring, no points for the East, three for the West. So 
So now the we got teams are forming up. We have a lot of sevens there on the chamber line. That's number 17, Taryn Spence in the blue for the east. 77, Whitney Emmerich lining up for the west in the red. But we have a team timeout, our first team timeout called. It's for, uh, called by the USA West. Clock frozen at 9 minutes 42 seconds in the first half. Score, USA West 106, USA East 15. And I want to give a shout out to Game Gear. You can design athletic apparel that no one in the world has. Completely unique designs powered by you. Whether you're looking for uniforms, workout gear, travel apparel, or fan wear, Game Gear is your one-stop solution. Visit GameGear.com for more information. They, of course, are one of the sponsors here for this weekend's JRD World Cup, the first Junior World Cup. More of a, a battle of the former British colonies. <laughs> Uh, the the Britain the current members of the Commonwealth. Current members of the Commonwealth. Yes. Um, we didn't like tea, so we kind of left that. <laughs> <laughs> now I've, I've been to I've been to Australia, and they're 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 more wine drinkers. More wine than, drinkers. Than well, there's tea a lot drinkers. a lot of great wine comes out <laughs> of least, Australia. At least the ones that I met. Maybe I just <laughs> maybe that's just an Adelaide thing. <laughs> maybe. I'm sure we have plenty of people typing feverishly away to talk about how much they don't like wine in Australia. So. <laughs> right, well, there's always there's always a hundred or so. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> T-Rex out there for Team USA East. He's battling up front. Oh, pushed to the inside to cut track. Pushed all the way through. He's going to have to go to the penalty bench. So the woes continuing for Team USA East on their jammers. Daniel McLaughlin, lead jammer for Team USA West. Had a little more trouble on that one up there in the front. But not that time. Oh, oh no, they, he, they, that was a close call. The outside pack ref, though, says, yes, he touched out of bounds. We have a jammer swap out. Terrence Spence back on the track. And Daniel McLaughlin will be serving a shortened penalty. Terrence Spence still on her initial pass, put, just shut down by Lexi Wager. Wager, Wager. Wager. Yes. <laughs> oh, but she goes to the penalty box. A back block penalty, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. A little bit of a too much impact on that impact. <laughs> so Daniel McLaughlin back in the driver's seat on the power jam. Second scoring pass right now. One-on-one -on -one with Bailey Wheat. He does. That was a... That was a, a, a slam to the sternum, followed by a pivot to the outside, and he gets he gets right by Bailey Wheat. I, I think he was either he was either skating roller derby or driving through the center lane. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Michaela Bordayo and Taylor Motto team up together. He's not happy with that. Okay, and there's the there's call. There's the call. Michaela Bordayo did not step out of bounds. She backed up. And Daniel McLaughlin t stepped right back in. That was a technical cut, and the referee agreed. So now it's a power jam for Taryn Spence of T USA East. Power jam for USA East. Lexi Wager in the penalty box, so a 4-3. Jam ends just as Speedy Peaches was setting up for a huge hit. All right, looking oh, at sorry. the... The skater formerly known as Speedy Peaches. <laughs> so... Taryn Spence, though, unable to complete her initial pass, so no points for USA East. One additional point in that third scoring pass for Daniel McLaughlin brings him to 11 points. So a total of 117 for USA West, 15 for USA East, with seven minutes remaining in the first. And Kelly Murphy on the line in a power start position for USA East. Daniel McLaughlin, of course, sitting in the box. Kelly Murphy working through the center of the pack. She's got a couple of beats. She's up to one. There we go. Jumps through. Lead jammer, USA East. Now, Kelly Murphy, a very talented skater. We were watching her, keeping our eye on her yesterday, but she more as a blocker, actually. She was absolutely a, a tremendous blocker for the team. But today, I think, and I think this is a result that they've recognized. That, I, I, well, I'm sorry. I think that they may, they may have recognized that, uh, that the jammer talent in the West is outstripping the East. They're reserving Kelly Murphy for jamming instead of blocking, simply because they need someone with that kind of power that you just saw there. Absolutely. She just hip-checked her way right past Anastasia Smith, Rochelle Joubert, and Lexi Wager. Not an easy thing to do, and completed the pass 
10 points so far. Third scoring pass, Anastasia Smith with a hip check takes down Kelly Murphy. And it's a, she gets a cutting the track penalty. It I'm didn't, not quite I didn't, sure how she got that. She was still, she was on her knees when the call came. But uh, the referees probably saw something we didn't. We have a table in the way here on turn yeah, four. I wasn't quite able to see. Yeah, and unfortunately, the t from our perspective, the table cut off our line of sight on the line. So not. So you'll have to judge at home if you were watching the video. Or we'll, do, we'll go into instant replay, slow motion instant replay in just a minute or about three or four years, depending. <laughs> no, I, I have heard that they might be able to do some instant replay, but I'm not going to make any guarantees. Oh, well. Daniel McLaughlin coming out of the penalty box and has already caught up to Ke Kelly Murphy. They are both now on their third scoring pass. 10 to 10 in the jam. Uh, Kelly Murphy getting those hips in just in time to avoid a cut track penalty, fighting her way through the track. There's the end of the jam, four to two on that last pass. Winning the jam for USA East, 14 to 12. It's only by two points, but that's got to be a moral victory, moral or, victory or a morale absolutely. victory. You take your pick for the, US, for the East. But this score now uh, exactly 100 points separating the two teams with just about, just under five minutes remaining in the first half. And now we got a full pack on the line. Madison Yoder and Zen Sapinoso are your jammer. Zen Sapinoso trying for that agility on the inside line that has worked so well for him. Cuts to the outside. He's got the full pack up there. Now he's only got two to beat. Forearm call that's going to loosen it up, and he is out. Lead jammer, Zen Sapinoso. Meanwhile, Mad Yoder going for the outside to complete that initial pass. A nice shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder action as the skater was skating backwards. She just blew him up. But she's a full lap behind Zen Sapanosa, and he's in control of the clock. He's going to call off the jam. Four to zero for the West. I'd say another four and out, but they haven't really been doing that. They've just been, been able to rack up these points. 133 to 29 so far for USA West. Cameron Brown now on the line for USA West for the second time. And that is Natalie Foley for USA East. One blocker each in the penalty box, a three on three in the pack. Natalie Foley getting by Lily Dow and Maya Johnson unable to make contact. So that's a lead jammer for the East, a rare Eastern lead jammer. And that is exactly what they need, those moral victories right now as they're headed into halftime with three minutes left in the period. They're making adjustments on the fly, seeing what's working, and I'm sure they're going to come out strong. It sounded almost like bird watching. from <laughs> <laughs> Recognized by its brilliant plumage this time of year. Now that's a lot of sevens. <laughs> 77, all the sevens. All the sevens. 77 for USA East. That is Kelly Murphy and Whitney Emrick. This is their second time matching up in this game. About uh, seven or eight jams ago, they were matched up, but didn't go so well for Kelly Murphy. I think she got she gave up a power jam. And there goes Whitney Emrick shaking off the Eastern defense, and she's lead jammer. Kelly Murphy able to, oh, almost able to break out. Speedy Peach is closing that inside line. And Whitney right. Emmerich apparently uh, is skating in a through a dimensional portal. Was able to do some quantum tunneling through the pack that first time. This time, though, appear, uh, reality seems to have collapsed, and she actually had to dodge. That's right, she had to turn slightly to the side to get through the pack. But I think most of the attention of the pack focused on Kelly Murphy. And there is a series of collisions in the pack, several skaters going down, including Kelly Murphy, and getting lapped a third time by Whitney Emmerich. 15 points so far for the West. So Kelly Murphy still on her initial pass. Those walls of Team USA West are so strong. That tripod, so effective. They're able to cycle up to the front, get in position, and see the jammer coming, throwing those hips. Kelly Murphy 
She's tired. It's obvious. Absolutely <laughs> surrounded right there. See uh, Danielle Mauder, Lindy G. Trout, and Anastasia Smith. And then uh, Rochelle Joubert coming back in. So now she's got four to deal with. And you can see Kelly Murphy getting tired. She's passed the star over to Bailey Wheat, number nine of the East, who manages to dodge past Danielle Mauder, completes the initial pass only. Whitney Emmerich sees it from a long distance away. Haley, sorry, yeah, Bailey Wheat Bailey only Wheat. getting halfway around to the pack before it's called off. A 29-point jam for USA West and less than a minute remaining in the first half. I'd be willing to bet this is probably going to be the last jam of the half. Got Zen Sapinoso out there for USA West. Got Madison Yoda for USA East. It's a great mashup for that final jam. Zen Sapinoso trying for the inside, not able to get it. Around to the outside, no joy there. Trying some little move, and meanwhile, Yoder pushed to the outside, but an illegal hit there, sending a blocker off and out front. Yoder, lead jammer for USA East. Oh, that was that was Alexandra Smith that went to the penalty box for the West. But uh, Ashlyn Fish going to the penalty box for e the East. That's going to make it a three-on-two pack. That, but that ends the jam. Madison, Madison Yoder actually winning the jam five to zero. That brings us into halftime. Uh, so. Ending on a high note with the USA East, they get that five-point jam to nothing, uh, but that ends with 34 points for the East, 162 points for the West. So, so far, Western dominance all the way. So far, the West showing that West is best, but East is beast. They've got a long road to go, but second half, they're going to come out adjusted and we will see what they have to offer. It's gonna be great. See you back here in about 15 minutes. <laughs> 